four, three, two, one. Hello, I'm Doug Wilson. I'm the President and CEO of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and I'd like to welcome you to a, another edition of Community Foundation Spotlight here at PAC-14. And with me today is Michelle Hughes. She's the Executive Director of the Life Crisis Center, so welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, why don't we start off by just telling the folks a little bit about the Life Crisis Center and all the great things that it does. Surely. The Life Crisis Center is what's called a regional crisis center. Mm -hmm. um, we serve parts of the eastern shore um, for different issues. Uh, the lower shore we serve for domestic violence, rape, child abuse, um, the kinds of issues around family violence. Right. And <clears throat> then we serve the entire shore with our suicide hotline and um, we are the 211 Maryland Center for mm. the nine counties of the shore right. for uh, information and referral to Health and Human Services. Great. Well, today we're here to talk about the Kids Fund, but I thought before we jumped into uh, a discussion about the Kids Fund, could you give us some idea of what kind of impacts domestic violence has on kids? Uh, domestic violence has a huge impact on children. Yeah. Uh, one of the <clears throat> more recent research says that children are actually more traumatized by seeing their uh, mother abused than they are to if they are abused themselves. Wow. And that's because they feel helpless to help a person that they want to protect. And, and I suspect they also have feelings still for the abuser. Oftentimes, yes. Yeah? Yes. It's, it's a very difficult situation for a child and can be extraordinarily traumatic and the trauma can last a lifetime. Oh my. So then they need to go through counseling and all kinds of things for probably the rest of their lives. And then I also understand many child victims of abuse, even though it may be towards a spouse, end up being abusers or no? Yes, there's a great deal of research that says that there's something called a cycle of violence. Mm. And when children are not treated when they are, uh, vic when they are child victims um, of, as witnesses to domestic violence, they can become either victims themselves or abusers. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's all they know. You know, in, your, in a household, a child believes that what happens in his house is what happens in everyone's house. Right. And so, unless they are shown that there are other ways to mm -hmm. live, mm -hmm. then they believe that that's how, that's how it's done. My goodness. What percentage of the victims of victims that you manage or assist with at Life Crisis Center are really children? Um, <clears throat> about 20% of our victims are children. Really? That mm -hmm. high? Yes. Oh we serve goodness. something over 100 children a year who are um, victims of abuse. Now, do, when children are abused, is it typically one parent or both parents? I don't, I don't, I'm using parent as a guardian here. Mm -hmm. It could be sure. whatever. Mm -hmm. is, or in the case of physical abuse, it is almost always one parent either with the support of the other parent or in collusion with the other parent. Oh, yes. But I in cases of child sex abuse, which is most of what we see, mm -hmm. it is much more likely to be only either one parent or one relative, one guardian, whatever. Right. Well, let's talk about the Kids Fund. Okay. How did it start? For some years, we have been um, <clears throat> providing for families things like when a mother and her children come to our shelter. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, she's had to leave in the middle of the night with nothing but the kids in their pajamas. Mm. And so we would need things like birth certificates because she couldn't mm -hmm. enroll them in school. I mean, right. she couldn't do anything if she didn't have... The, the, the her papers right and so w it's forty dollars to get a copy of your birth certificate in this day uh -huh. what a deal <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so we have all, we've been providing that um child needs to go to school needs the backpack needs you know pencils right. and all the stuff that children need for school right we would provide that mm -hmm. um as our state funding has been cut we've had less money to do that. Wow. And so we got to the point where we really could not provide the things that 
that children need in order to have just a normal life, the things that we all give to our children. Mm -hmm. Perfect example, we had a woman um, who was no longer in our shelter. She had, she got a job and she had a place to live. Mm -hmm. and she had several children, the oldest of whom was a rising senior at a high school here. Right. Um, there is what's called a sitting fee mm -hmm. to have your picture taken for the yearbook. Uh -huh. She did not have the $45. For the sitting fee. Yeah. Right. And so the, her therapist came to us and said, can we provide this sitting fee so that her child's picture can be in the yearbook? And I said, well, doesn't she want to buy the picture? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that would make... She wasn't asking for something for her. She wasn't no. asking to have a picture of her child. No. She just wanted him to be like all the other kids and have his picture in the yearbook. Oh. And so we said, yeah, we're going to do this, but we've got, we get more of these now. Yes. And we need to begin to look for where, how can we provide the funding right. that will allow us to do this when families are in crisis. Yeah. And so we started the Kid Fund. All right. Now, it does receive some government funding, doesn't it? Or no. no? None? No. The Kid Fund is funded 100% by contributions. My goodness. Mm. That's, that's lovely. How does the Kid Fund benefit children generally? I mean, you, get, you gave us a great example there of mm -hmm. the portrait or the sitting fee, I guess, for the mm -hmm. portrait in the yearbook. What other kinds of things do you use the money for? All sorts of things. Um, now that <clears throat> the school systems are going to uniforms, Oh, yes. Uniforms. Mm. Yeah. Yes. We have to make certain that when a child goes from our shelter to the school, mm -hmm. that they have their uniforms. Right. Um, so we can provide, we can help with uniforms. We have a family with three children right now, and they asked for us to help with uniforms. Mm -hmm. Mother put, she did the right thing. She went to the store, put it on layaway, mm -hmm. you know, and she's been paying on it. Right. But she's not going to be able to pay it off before school starts. I see. And so we're going to pay the last payment oh. so that when school starts, her mm -hmm. children will have their uniforms. We do things like um, we have a, gr a girls group, a group of teenage girls who have all been victims of sex abuse as children. Yeah. And um, the therapist works with them. Mm -hmm. She's done some wonderful things with them. Um, mm -hmm. But periodically, we want to do things like we want to we want to take them someplace, you know, mm -hmm. we want them to take them out as a group to do the things that other children do. Right. I hear you. And so we can now pay for the group to go wherever it is they want to, what, what, where, wherever the activity is that they want. Okay. Um, they did a cheerleading camp, these teenage girls, for the little girls. Oh. So we have something called the Strong <laughs> Girls Club for, for yeah. little girls who yeah. are between the ages of seven and ten. Wow. And so to give back to us, they said, can we put on a cheerleading camp here at Life Crisis mm -hmm. just for these little girls? Wow. And, and so we've, you know, we do, we've done some of that kind of thing. Wow. Um, but, you know, uh, kids need normalcy. They do, yes. And the more of a normal life you can provide for them, mm -hmm. the better adults they're going to be. Right. The more productive adults they're going to be. Right. And so if... If it takes a fifty dollars mm -hmm. to help a child get some level of normalcy in his or her life, we want to be able to provide that. Right. Before continuing, I just want to remind the viewers that uh, I'm Doug Wilson from the Community Foundation, and with me today is Michelle Hughes. She is the executive director of the Life Crisis Center, and we're talking about the Kids Fund, and we're on Pack 14. Do the families or the or the are the funds uses? Um, do people come to you and request funding for it, or do you have plans, program things that you try and use the funds for? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's the simple answer, right? Yes, okay. both. Um, the funds are used only for people who are involved in our programs. Okay. Um, you know, nobody is coming in off the street and saying, I need this for my kid. Mm -hmm. We are very careful to make certain that the, um, the children who benefit, or the families who benefit from these funds, mm -hmm. are in fact in need. Right. And that they are people whom we have already identified as p 
people with trauma in their lives because right. we only deal with victims of trauma. Right, right. How does the uh, Kids Fund, I, I, I'm getting the sense from the stories you've been telling me that the parents are very appreciative of the fact that the Kids Fund exists because now they can give their children a little bit of the normalcy that you talked about. You know, being able to be in the yearbook or, or whatever yes. it takes. The cheerleading, I think that's just absolutely mm -hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. That's terrific. The, um, when we started this, we decided that we were going to, th this money was, was going to be, we were going to document this money. Right. So it's not like, you know, we spent $50 for groceries for the shelter. Right. That's, that's very cut and dry. Mm. This is the kind of thing where <clears throat> they work with a member of our staff to apply for the money. Okay. Tell us what they need, mm -hmm. why they need it. The therapist or the person on our staff who normally is the therapist. Right. Then <clears throat> sort of signs off on it. She's documenting it. Right. Um, then we have a committee mm -hmm. in uh, the administrative offices that doesn't know these people from Adam. So, you know, we're very um, sort of removed from the... Um, the day-to-day -day stuff. I see. And we make a decision mm -hmm. and then um, take care of that. And then the staff person, along with the parent, fills out a, um, a survey form telling us how this money helped their family. Great. And we've had some wonderful stories. Give me one. <laughs> I've already given you one, Doug. I know you've given me one. Give me another one. <laughs> well, um, we had a little not a little girl, we had a 14-year-old girl. That's who, little to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But when she was 12, she was unfortunately um, sexually abused by a relative. Yes. Um, she was removed from her home because DSS felt that it was unsafe for her mm -hmm. to be in this situation. So they put her in foster care. Right. She was pregnant by this relative. uncle or cousin or something. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. She had the baby. The baby was given up for adoption yeah. um, because she, she was 12 when she was impregnated. Oh, dear. So now she's in middle school and um, trying to build a life, get on with her, her, her life, right. and they're having a school trip. Okay. Yes. And um, they're going to Washington, D.C. Terrific. And she wants to go... No. And she's in foster care. There really isn't any money for this. No. You know, um, right. the government doesn't have the money to fund these things. And right. so she, they came to us, and we paid for her. And not only did she want to go on the trip, she's so appreciative of her foster parent for how, how well she's been treated in foster care. Yeah. She wants the foster mother to go as a chaperone. Oh, boy. Yeah. More money. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, altogether, it didn't amount to a hundred dollars. I know. You know, but and I said, we cannot send this child to Washington D.C. with no spending money. Oh, so you gave her. You money know, too. every kid, you got to have some money for a coke or something. Sure, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So actually, the staff kicked in the spending money. <laughs> boy, oh boy! Uh, Isn't you know, that so terrific? so the. The money that we have from the kid fund is actually um, has acquired more money from the mm -hmm. outside because the staff was recognized that we can't send a child right. on a field trip and not give her money for something. Right. That's a wonderful story. Stuff like that just kind of gets you right here, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me, how can the community help with the kids fund? Well, the community can contribute to the kid fund. And how do they do that? They can... Give us a call. They mm -hmm. can send us a check. Yep. Um, tax deductible. Tax deductible. We right. are 501c3. That's right. So it is 100% tax deductible. Great. And um, as you know, the Women's Leadership Fund at the yes. Community Foundation mm -hmm. um, has recently made a contribution to our kid fund. Yes, I know that. I was going to tell <laughs> you that in case you didn't know. Yeah. Of, of $5,000 to help us mm -hmm. to continue to do this so that it will be you know, it's there for the long term. Right. How many kids, let me, just, it's kind of a simple question. Mm -hmm. um, there are no expectations for these children with respect to using money from the kids' funds. You're just hoping 
to provide them a sense of themselves that they are truly part and parcel of the society and you're normal we, we want you to go out and absolutely be a happy kid absolutely right there that's all that we are looking for right. in in with this fund is to help to help children to feel as normal as possible right. because this kind of trauma sets a child apart right. from his or her community right and and what we want them to do is to have a sense of normalcy right be able to go on the field trip have your picture in the yearbook do mm. what other kids do do yeah you know and so this for us this is a way to right. to help children to get their lives back right well i think doing the kind of work that your organization does which is just absolutely commendable it's just terrific we're so lucky to have you really in our community that the kids tug on your heartstrings they you do. know mm -hmm. and and they are the unfortunate victims they are of, of of domestic violence and other abuses mm -hmm. and they are even directly abused as well as you'd mentioned about mm -hmm. the girls and and that's just terrible so we're so thankful that you are here doing what you do well thank you and we wish you all the best with the kids fund well thank you i um i have an example for you of how the community foundation's gift yeah has um, leveraged more gifts. Let's hear it. Um, we we came to the um, the reception mm -hmm. at which the community foundation presented the women's leadership gifts. Right. And um, as a result of that, we had a call from BB and T mm -hmm. Bank. And this year, instead of being a part of the national BB and T fundraising campaign, right. they have targeted the Kid Fund. Great. And so the local branches of BB&T right. are um, collecting contributions to the Life Crisis Center's Kid Fund. There you go. And that is a, a result mm -hmm. of the Community Foundation's gift right. from the Women's Leadership Fund. Right. Well, that's terrific. Michelle, thank you very much for being with us today. It's, my it's pleasure. been terrific having you here. And I encourage everyone that's viewing this to make a con dig into your pocket and for the kids of our communities and make a donation to the Kids Fund today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC-14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.